Welcome back, troglodytes, to the Troglies Guitar Show, an update to the Trey Tuesday series. We started off with the Glary model GT602 acoustic guitar. We traded that for two effects pedals, a Neo Mistress and a Holy Stain. We then broke the pedals apart and got an ESP LTD EC10 and a set of EMG Glenn Tipton pickups for the other one. Today we're going to cover what happened to the pickups and the LTD. The EC10 didn't generate many trade offers, none of them that I really wanted to do. So after a week I received a straight up cash offer for my full asking price of $120. He was a fan of the show, he happened to be driving through my town, he wanted this one for alternate tunings to pair with his other one that he had. And in case you're wondering, yes, he took the stickers off. I had a lot more luck with the EMG pickups despite the video not performing very well. The first offer I got was for a Dan Electro Dano Blaster Innuendo from the 90s. Now it wasn't this particular one, he didn't share any photos, but this thing's freaky, I like it. I probably would have went with this trade, except for I received a much better offer shortly after. Alright, so here's what I got. So it's another ESP guitar here. The EC256 model. Now I haven't done any research yet, I'll do that later, but it appears we at least have some sort of a two-piece flame maple veneer most likely. I have to look up the body spec woods, but this is very similar to the EC10 we had, except for this is a set net construction. Still got our volute and everything here, but I'm guessing this is just going to be a nicer feeling version than the one that we had initially. So let's go ahead, throw this one on the workbench and take a detailed look at what's in it. On our first assessment here, I believe he said he just never really played this thing that much. You can see it's sat around, it's all dirty, it's got some dust, so I can definitely clean that off. Uh, clean up the electronics a little bit if they're scratchy, but we'll have to figure that out. But I'm noticing some setup issues with this, like super fret buzzy. So I might need to do a slight truss rod adjustment, see what's going on there. But I mean, this is a really nice guitar. We even have the flag inlays. That's something I learned last time is that these headstocks are based off of a waving flag. While I'm cleaning this guitar up, I thought I would teach everybody a little bit about the LTD EC series. I believe EC stands for electric cutaway, that'd be my best guess, but there's like four main levels to these. There's the EC10, which is the entry level 199 price point, and then it jumps up to the 256, which is what we have today, which is offered brand new around $399 with a case. The next main step up from there is the EC400. That's when you start getting EMG active pickups, and you also get a higher price point at $749. Now the really high end LTDs are the EC1000 series. Now depending on which one you go for, they're between like $899 to about $1200 bucks. But some of them they've got Seymour Duncan pickups, you can get EMG active pickups. Some of them even have Evertunes on them. So despite LTD being the entry level version of an ESP, they definitely have some higher end versions as well. Alright, let's take a look here and kind of compare it to the EC10 that I had earlier. So the EC10 has different pickups in it. Those are called the ESP designed LH100 series. And this is the exact same thing, but the LH150 series. So I'm guessing these are going to be slightly nicer pickups, but they definitely look very similar. And the cavity routes are also looking the same here. They've got the black shielding paint in them. The biggest difference to note between those two is these ones are coil splittable, so you can get single coil sounds out of them as well. Another difference is you get covers on these, so you don't see that whole ESP design thing on it. As you might have noticed, the control layout's also different. Instead of a master volume, master tone, and a three-way toggle switch, you now have the toggle switch in a traditional Les Paul location, and you have the addition of a second volume knob here. Since this one has binding, it doesn't have the comfort carves on the front either. The markings are different on the bridge and tailpiece. This one reads BM003, but the tailpiece does not seem to have any type of marks on it. Now I was curious if this was a veneer or an actual top. It appears to be a veneer and looking at ESP's website, that pretty much confirms it. 
But, you know, for a veneer, this is pretty nice. It's not like one of those photo veneers. It at least appears to be a real wood veneer, so you have that nice movement within the flame top. But the body itself, instead of being basswood, is actually mahogany. So that's a great upgrade right there. However, what I'm viewing as a downgrade here is the neck changes from maple to three-piece mahogany. I really like maple necks because I'm a 70s era Gibson fan, but this might suit you better if you're into tradition. Speaking of tradition, this one's going to be better for you as well because it's actually only 22 extra jumbo frets instead of the EC10 that had 24. So this one appears to be like if you want a Les Paul, this is what this is going for. It doesn't necessarily have all the modern attributes to it. But instead of your engineered hardwood fretboard, this one has something called Jatoba or something like that. That's a new wood on me. I think it looks good and it feels good. That's the main thing. You see all these little wood pours and everything. It still feels nice and smooth. I love this. It's looking good and we've got the upgraded inlays to the flags again. So this is definitely a very visually striking guitar here. Face of the headstock, it looks pretty much the same. I believe the binding is new, as is on the body, and you've got the LTD logo. Okay, so after stringing it back up, playing with the action height and neck relief and whatnot, I'm kind of happy there was something wrong with this guitar. I believe it's the 14th fret. I mean, when I check them all, most of them are in the ballpark, but this 14th one, you can hear it, it's super high. So if I make the action any higher than 0.1 of an inch, kind of by the 14th fret, all the notes will just choke out after like the 8th or 9th fret. But if you have it set up with this, which is what I would consider what, like medium to medium high action, everything rings out, you know, for the most part. It's playable at this point, but the bridge is pretty high up there. So if anybody's got some like fret working tools that you're no longer using, or if you want to do a partial trade on a guitar or something in the future, definitely keep that in mind. I would love to learn how to do fret work and like refrets and all that stuff. That would make my job so much easier. Because then, you know, any guitar that comes my way has an issue, I can just fix it. That'd be beautiful. So it's playable, but not necessarily perfect. I get a nut width 1.65 inches and 2.06 at the 12th. At the first fret, I get 0.87 inches, and it stays fairly consistent 0.93 at the 12th. And this one's closer to 24 and 3 quarters inches, unlike that last one that was supposed to read that and was closer to 25. Moving on to the back side here, the electronics look very familiar, but notice this cavity is actually much cleaner than the EC10 we had. It doesn't have all those frayed bits everywhere, but you've got the push-pull pot and then these two other pots here, which are branded Alpha, looks like B500 something. And we have these familiar comfort carves right here, but what's interesting between the EC10 and the 256 is this is now a set neck construction instead of bolt-on but you've actually lost a feature here the bolt-on has a little bit of an angle right here which makes it a little bit comfortable to play higher up this one has the familiar kind of bulky heel of a les paul so in many ways the ec10 in my opinion so far it still holds up as its own instrument pretty well even to this model that costs twice as much brand new some other differences here is, I mean, this is a full gloss finish. Some of the EC10s are too. I prefer the satin one anyways. And the newer ones here are made in China. Some of the older ones apparently were made in Indonesia. This particular example weighs 7 pounds, 9.8 ounces. But it feels good. It's kind of a nice slim body to it. It's not too heavy, not too light. It's just right. So let's go ahead and hear its tones. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, so now that I've toyed around with the LTD EC256, what are my final opinions of this thing? If I'm honest with you guys, I think I like the EC10 better. It kind of had quirkier specs and a few more comfort features that I feel made it superior. Now, if looks mean anything to you, I mean, this thing blows those out of the park. You get a nice flame maple veneer, so it's fancy in that aspect. You get a nice gloss finish with color in it. I mean, they do make some really pretty ones. And this particular one doesn't have the translucent finish on the back to see the wood grain, but the other ones do. So they're very visually stunning guitars. And you get the whole set neck and more tonal opportunities from this. But things like lacking two frets, your comfort carve on the back here is only right here instead of like the whole middle portion of the guitar. And I personally like the whole maple neck thing, but I mean, was this a bad guitar? No, LTD can definitely get you a very nice guitar for very little money. And I'm surprised these things actually come with cases. Now this particular one, yeah, it's got some sort of setup issue that I was unable to fix without just having the action pretty high. I mean, it's not unplayable, but it's not the most comfortable guitar in the world. So if you are interested in trading me something, keep that in mind. You might need to do a little bit of minor fret work and adjust the action to your own liking. So it's not perfect, but condition wise, it is pretty good. I mean, you've got some nicks and dings, and fingerprints from me playing it here. I did notice a few like QC issues. I mean, this is a fairly new guitar. The binding's a little bit roughed up right here. I also saw that in a few areas on the headstock, but I mean, there's nothing, you know, majorly wrong with this. That's not a factory refurbished model. I just think it needs a good fret leveling and then you'll be good to set it up the way it should be. So as always, if you're interested in trading me something, email me at tradetrogly at gmail.com. That's the best way to know that I'll actually see it. I check that email about once a day. And you can check the availability of the guitar by looking at the link in the description to the Reverb for Sale page. Thank you, Troglodytes, for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.